Hi all, uh, welcome to uh, another live session with uh, a group of experts that we've identified that from really around the world that we feel are doing fascinating and important work, have a history of work in the uh, ed tech space and the moving online, teaching with technology and so on. And really pleased today to chat with someone who I'm not even sure how far we go back, but uh, Laura Chenowich, I think we go back probably something like 15 plus years, not 100% sure, but um, so I know uh, Laura has uh, long brought a critical voice to the ed tech conversation, which emphasizes a lot of factors that are often ignored in the utility of going online. And you focus heavily on the experience of students, you focus on a holistic assessment of the impact and so on. But maybe before we get too far down the pipeline, can you just give us a quick overview to who you are and what you do? Sure. So I'm the director for the Center for Innovation and Learning and Teaching at the University of Cape Town. And I've been interested in technology, particularly with regards to how it plays out in resource constrained contexts and how, what it means for inequality in a whole range of ways. Um, but before I, I say any more, I just want to mention that our university, like many other universities is preparing for remote teaching and at the moment I'm not in the office and the fantastic work is being led by Stephen Markwood and Sukaina Walji and our excellent team which is why I'm able to talk to you today. Great well I certainly do appreciate you taking the time and I think the equity angle is a key one because it's not an angle that is a USA versus an African country or you know, Germany versus Senegal, it, it, it's, it occurs, equity constraints, especially when you move online and with technology occurs within countries. Like it, it, the challenges that you talk about are going to be relevant for someone who has a group of students in a rural area of Alabama as well. So can you talk a little bit about what it means from your end when you say you're focused on sort of this equity from a technology lens? Um, I think your point is absolutely right. People tend to imagine sort of rich countries and poor countries and rich cities and poor cities, but actually it happens across cities, it happens across countries. You can't make any assumptions, even the most uh, elite universities, for example, will have students with issues around connectivity, technology, and increasingly around digital literacies. And of course, it's not only students, it's academics. So the assumption that uh, right now everyone's going to go online and academics are literate and understand what to do and what's going on and what the data implications are etc etc i think is a bit of a problematic one and fortunately there's some really good people who are providing tips and tricks about designing for low bandwidth um, etc so maybe for, to, to lead on from that what what would you suggest from your research background that faculty should keep front and center regarding equity and access as they begin to transition into this digital environment that many of them would rather not teach in quite honestly but now it's really not a matter of choice it's a matter of the only option we have but based on the research and the work that you've done what kind of guidance would you provide for faculty um i think keep it simple this is not this is not the time to uh, d design for bells and whistles sometimes the lowest tech solution is just fine email might be the thing if if that's what it takes um i think everyone assumes you've got to be doing zoom and you've got to be doing skype and you etc etc that's not necessarily the case so design for the simplest environment and then i would also suggest keep it contextual so there are all these people who are sending out tips and tricks they've been published everywhere design for your context your students and um, if it turns out to be useful for other people later on, that's, that's cool. But focus on, on your particular context. Yeah, and that's such, a, you know, that's such a critical point, I think, to be aware of is that in the end, each teacher is really the expert of their students. Like each exactly. teacher knows what their student needs. They know some of the dynamics that they face. And to uh, adopt context neutral approaches to it in many ways does a disservice to both the student and to the expertise of the teacher so in what ways would you suggest then a faculty member or a teacher that's now getting into this environment how would they 
properly ferret out, if you will, the approaches that are going to work in their context? Um, the one thing I'm, I want to actually say before answering your question is don't think this is online education. What we're doing now is not the real thing. This is emergency teaching, this is remote teaching, this is, I think the Scots have got a word for it, it's upward teaching. Um, and so know that what you're gonna do is imperfect and that's fine. I think that's really, really important. People get very anxious about doing everything really well and do what's uh, familiar to the students, use your learning management system, however you might feel about it in normal circumstances, everyone knows it. Um, yeah, and forgive yourself for doing it badly. That's the other thing. People get incredibly anxious. So I think a forgiving environment at the moment is the main thing. Keeping in touch, keeping connected is far more important at, uh, in this time and be human. Yeah, those are, those are terrific points, especially the emphasis that you've made you know, in several instances around the simplicity aspect there. Uh, yeah. I'm sure if you had an infinite amount of time to move your curriculum and your teaching online, you could have a rich, immersive, uh, engaged experience. But uh, I think you're, you're exactly right from at least my experience is focus on connecting with the students, focus on engaging with them. And sometimes that means partnering with them. It means asking them, hey, what's going to work for you? And you may start okay. down one path early on and listen to what your students say take their feedback if it ends up being that they don't like this particular approach maybe you do shift to a discussion forum rather than zoom meetings or maybe you do opt to go with a mailing listserv rather than some other type of approach and i think that's what i mean by being human admit that we're all doing this together that we don't all know what's work best and you know if your child walks into the room or your dog jumps on your lap that's cool we're all actually in real situations and we're all human together and that's absolutely fine great well and, and before we we sort of wrap up here i know one thing that the listeners or the viewers would benefit from knowing is this is an area of expertise for you you've sort of had a covid run if you will, in South Africa, and you've recently uh, shared some of your thoughts on uh, on, a, on a prominent blog, which we'll link into to the at the end of the video. But you, this is areas that you've gone through. So, can you maybe explain a little bit of the the situation that's really formed a lot of your experience and the advice that you're providing? Yeah, uh, we had a situation that was both similar and very different in the sense that um, higher education in South Africa was went through a period of uh, quite regular shutdowns when a whole lot of uh, tensions really rose to the surface and there were protests. And one of the strategies used was to um, suggest that what was called blended learning happened. And I would hope that this is far less politicized and uh, contentious than that was. But I think the one thing one can say for sure is that technology is not neutral, it's never neutral even in a situation like this that seems to be so obviously in everyone's interest, it's going to be politicized and existing uh, tensions and uh, contestations, et cetera, will, will infiltrate what happens with the technology and we simply have to be prepared for it and we have to be aware of it um, because it, 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 what's happening in this space is not separate. This, this virtual world and this material world are not two different places. Well, those are some great points and I think very practical insight and we'll certainly share uh, with, the, with the viewers and the participants and of course the, the you know, link to, to your site and the link to your work. And, um, and, and I think just on a sort of a final uh, concluding thought as well, the, and we're seeing this already, there is a sense in which significant upheaval brings out the absolute best in people it brings faculty sharing resources faculty offering their insights such as you know experts such as yourself that are willing to carve out time to to share your expertise with others from around the world it brings out the absolute best in people by the same account it brings out another camp of folks who are eager to have you use their edtech product or who are eager to pitch their consulting 
insight and the list goes on. Uh, how do you stay, especially in, in light of what you were dealing with in South Africa, how do you stay yeah. hopeful and optimistic when you're seeing on the one hand this fantastic outpouring, but on the flip side, realizing that there's a lot of people circulating, hoping that the corpse of higher education will provide them with a nourishing meal? Well, it's a little bit like you said, in the moment in the crisis, people are amazing. There is extraordinary resilience. There are extraordinary uh, situations of care. Um, I think from the point of view of teaching and learning, one just has to keep focusing on the academic project and keep uh, academic and educational control of what's going on and prioritize student learning above all else. And I think if you hang on to that, the rest will fall into place and there'll be room later to make sense of it. Things like the technology that people suddenly use which didn't go through the normal processes of um, selection and etc. Those technologies don't have to stick. Make it clear to everyone that this is chosen in an emergency and later on there will be a due process. So, you know, as you say, sometimes people take uh, the opportunity to get a foot in the door and we, I think it's important to make it clear that it's an emergency measure and we'll reflect on that later. But it's not difficult to be optimistic when you see the kinds of dedication and um, resilience that people show at times like this. Yeah, well, that's terrific. Again, thanks very much, uh, Laura, for taking time out to, to share with the group here. And uh, I'm sure others will look forward to seeing more of your work and engaging with, with more of your research. So thanks again. It's a pleasure and take care. Take care, you too. <laughs> All right, thanks, Laura.